I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. And I'm April, sex toy maven, VP of Hot Octopus, and I've dedicated my life to the business of sex. We're two people with a passion for educating and inspiring shame-free conversations about sex and relationships. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com and for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shameless Sex Podcast. This episode is, well, it's actually a new guest, but it is a repeat topic that is a hot motherfucking topic. Specifically for architects. Yes. (laughs) Of life. Are you an architect? Because you will love this. But also, are you confused in your sexuality? Do you wonder, hmm, what do I like in the bedroom? How do I feel my arousal? What is my jam when it comes to touch and being touched? I don't know. What's my jelly? Yeah, what's my jam and my jelly? Do you know the the j- no, I won't go that joke. Peanut butter jelly time? No, the one about what's the Don't difference do between jam no, and we're, ju- we're moving on. Moving on. You want that joke and more. Go <laughs> ask 555-555. Five, 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 five. All right. Anyway, so this is with Julianne Vaccaro. I say it right? You nailed it. Julianne Vaccaro. So she does many things beyond the erotic blueprints, but she did train under Jaya, who is the creator, educator, teacher of the erotic blueprints. And we featured Jaya almost probably a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. I think ago. it was more than a year and a half ago. It was an episode 126, and she shared all about it. It changed our lives, and then April then forgot what her erotic blueprint is, so then we figured it out again in this episode. Uh, and I cannot tell you how many any uh, listeners, clients, I have referred to this that episode to because it, it really is helpful for them to understand, oh my God, no wonder I'm different from my partner and there's ways we can work together. I've recommended girlfriends and guy friends that I have, humans in my life that have been inquiring as me an expert. I'm like, yo, look, <laughs> I love talking about sex and relationships. But refer to the podcast and the experts that know their shit and go check out your erotic blueprint. And they've taken the quiz yeah. and their partners have and taken the free, quiz. it's free, by the way. It's a free quiz. Yeah. And they've had, I think, and and most of them, I think there were four different people that I'm referring to right now, have had a real opening about their uh, experience. And it's, it's actually opened their sex lives up even wider. And it's just kind of fun and hot to take anyways. So you're like, oh, wow, I'm more, we won't go into all the things because listen to the podcast and you, you'll have a greater understanding of what the erotic blueprints entails. Um, it's a wonderful formula, map, and it's playful, it's sexy, and it can show you all the ways that you can show up for yourself in a bigger, better way as an erotic being as well as with partners which will likely just lead to more sex and fabulous orgasm so um, we will dive into that soon uh, before we do a sex question we just want to do a quick plug which we haven't done for a while what we did for a bit is we want to plug our discord um, shameless sex discord which is a free app and it's a chat app where you can go and connect with other shameless sex fans listeners etc other people who are open to talking about sexuality and even and sometimes April and I guest on there and answer sex questions. Um, and it's also just ways to connect with other people or who are like-minded or like, hey, I'm on the same path or how about this it's about episode? about community. Community. It's, it's about you are a shameless sex revolutionary. You're with other shameless sex listeners that also care about their community and friends. Yeah. And it's a community of folks that want to learn about each other and new and amazing things. And you did a, a Q&A yeah, last week. Yeah, the other day. Week. You would have been there, but you, you ate the bad sausage. So. I Well, I actually did <laughs> She eat. literally ate the bad sausage. I got sausage. food poisoning and yeah. sorry about It was a bison sausage and I was at my dad's house and the last time I eat my dad's cooking, sorry dad, you don't listen, but he doesn't <laughs> even know what a podcast is. So. No, that's, that's perfect. Well, so the bison sausage is out. She didn't make it, but she will at some point. And, but, and besides the fact, we, we I mean, we we are on there with limited time because we're very busy. We're writing a book. We have a podcast. We have other jobs. But we have two wonderful moderators. Shout out to the 
Brian's, I can say their names because they're public on there, who are running our Discord. And it's a really great place for we have hundreds of people on there who are connecting. Um, if you want to know more, just go click on the link in the show notes and you sign up. It's free. And then you can just be a part of the Shameless Sex Revolution uh, and enjoy all these lovely conversations about sex. I'm excited for a sex question, Miss Amy. And you, you don't know about it yet, do you? I haven't read it. I am closing my eyes and I'm dropping in all right, with so, you. So imagine yourself. You have to open your eyes to read it. Oh, yeah. I actually have. Okay. So I, you close your eyes and I'll keep mine open. So <clears throat> I'm divorced and with a new partner who is adventurous. And between the two of us, we have lots of new toys. The problem is storage. I have two teens and can't find any attractive storage that locks. Any suggestions or companies that make attractive furniture with lots of toy storage would be much helpful. Not just a dungeon vibe or a chest, please. Please help. Okay, so question here is how many toys do you have? What are we talking about? Are we talking about like a closet? Are we talking about like a suitcase? Or are we talking about like a little lockbox that's the size of like, you know, a briefcase or something? So some things come to mind here for me. And I and I get this, especially if you have young people. First of all, okay, if you have two teens, I bet they've already seen your toys, just so you know. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I was looking in all the drawers. I found my mom's Kama Sutra book. I found her vibrator. No, I did I not use it. that at my friend's parents house when I was like seven yeah you're like what's this this is cool this is cool let's put it in our armpit did you oh yeah this is the magic one I never put it on my my genitals at the time because I didn't understand that w- w- that's what it was for I you didn't were too understand busy humping your parents it was plastic and, other and it was white and it was it had a pointy end I have no idea and a oh, battery like a charger generic. it was yeah. really old this is in the 80s yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So here's the so yes. So no matter if you're a teenager, you have teenagers or children that yeah. are below their teenage or seven. years. Yes. Yeah, pr- you protect your teens and also know that they may have already seen these items and objects. Now, maybe you're getting deeper in the kink scene and all of a sudden you have like a pinwheel or nipple clamps and you're like, "All right, well, it's okay if my the kid shocker. finds yeah or the zappers oh my gosh yeah so which no shame in that but maybe you're like all right some of the things are feeling like I'm not ready to have that conversation with my kid um, but if you you know if you have a vibrator and a sex book in a drawer and it's been open kids are very smart they're snoopy they know how to look around this is just what they do but you're asking how can I protect this so a couple options that I have and maybe April has some other suggestions number one if it's just a smaller scale box that can hold like a magic wand so like a wand style vibrator and like some lube and a couple other things there are locked boxes that we sell at purepleasureshop.com and you get 15% off with coupon code shameless sex uh, and there's also all you, that code applies to all other sex toys as well so you can go there and you can find these boxes that are specifically designed for this purpose if you have more than that you can get a small or medium-sized suitcase and just lock that shit and it's just a suitcase with some lock things and like they're not gonna be like mom what's in the suitcase maybe they are like i don't know i just keep that thing locked because it has my travel documents and i keep it safe Uh, if we're talking a closet then you might need a whole new furniture set of some sort and that's like uh, what would be the word Uh, armoire armoire an armoire but uh, like with a lock like one of those old lock and key armoires yes you could have a locker yeah or if you need a whole room well you got to move out and get a room that always has a lock and now your kids are like what's going on in that room my guess is it's more like a suitcase or a lockbox. I'm I'm a fan of a suitcase for this particular situation because a suitcase you can get one that has the code that you know, which they were saying not a vi- a dungeon vibe or a chest. Yeah. But a suitcase you can wheel different places. So if you're going on a little holiday with your partner, you can take the the toy suitcase with you if that that's your that's your journey. Uh, and I have a sex toy suitcase that's my actual selling suitcase that I have all the time that I have to put a TSA lock on because I've been stopped various places in the world with my vibrators, uh, not because I'm using them because they're my selling kit. Yeah. And it works, and they it's store always things a fun really well. They're different. We're going oh, through TSA. It's <laughs> so funny. I've I love it. Definitely I, been shamed before by some really? TSA people. Oh, you told me that TSA is only in the United States. So abroad, I've been shamed by some, uh, some security folks. So yeah, in the United States, what I will, when I travel with my sex toys, whether it's for pleasure or for education, I deliberately put them 
on the top of everything so that when it goes through and some of them are made of metal like when I used to work for Crave and they're like made of metal pieces um, I, I would put them deliberately on top because it's going to get screened I just know it is and also that way I can hide like my, my uh, toenail tri- cl- clippers because <laughs> they're too focused on the vibrators and dildos so even steal those things from me oh if you're listening to TSA sorry I just added myself oh that's anyway, not your checked luggage that's your carry this is my carry on I, oh. I prefer to carry on if I can um, and I usually only travel for small sense. Anyways, I put them right on top. They open it and I'm just blatantly like, that's a sex toy. That's a dildo. And they're like, Whoa! and sometimes they're like, where did you get this? Where do I find this? This looks cool. Or they just want to like take the gloves off and move away as soon as possible. But you, when you travel, you have at least like 10 sex toys in there. I do. And if this person if they're minimized for storage, because with the with the suitcase, it's great. But if this person's minimized for storage, one thing I've done when I've lived with my previous partner and his teenager is have a little bin in my closet that kind of blends in. No teenager, unless they're a teenager sharing your clothes or a child sharing your ch- your clothes, will go through all of your all of your things. Maybe they will. I did. But but you could actually have like a bin or something that has some of your your toys and things and you could actually put a polite note or just a note that says this is my personal stuff. Yeah. And please, please let it be mine. And you don't have to say don't touch. Or it could be like, hey, if you're if you're checking this out, come ask me questions, you know, or something like that. More like not shame, but like, hey, so maybe if you're seeing this, you're curious. Let's talk about it instead of like you're bad. Back right. off. Don't touch. Because if you say enter. don't touch or don't look, people are, that's the first thing I would do. Don't press this button. Yeah. I'm going to fucking push the button and see what happens. Or like, don't put your finger in that fire. Right. Oh, I'm going to do it. So it, you could say, view at your own risk. However, once you view, maybe ask some questions. Yeah. Or just ask some fucking questions. Without the word fuck. Just yeah. more like, hey, look, this is, yeah, I did this when I was younger. And I think of like my parents' bedroom and all the places they could have possibly hid sex toys or books on Kama Sutra. I would have found that shit i was i was finding the old playboys i was looking for all the things i found everything my mom ever tried to hide ever i I think most teenagers do yeah especially because you are left home way more than when you're a in in your adolescent years or you're curious and you're curious and you're home alone and i'm like what is my mom up to yeah and that's obviously something that is a breach of privacy but I was a kid and I didn't fucking care I, don't think, I was see, like I don't, I don't know my I mom's privacy at, she's my mom see I don't look at it it's like one thing for them to be looking at your cell phone and shit but, but for them to be curious about sexuality where no one's teaching them about it so they're gonna go look through your room so they can at least learn something unless they're having these conversations that's not really a, I don't know I don't look at it that way they're like they're, they're, they're just hungry to know um, and so what I would say is if you have things that are like super duper kinky or whatever that you're worried and like I'm not ready until they're 18 to talk about this get the lockbox but don't be afraid to maybe leave out like the vibrator in the lube that shows that you're a sexual person because you are and they know you are and they probably are they will be and that's where they came from and that's okay so maybe you get the smaller lockbox like at purepleasureshop.com where you put the more like risque things um or if you have a lot of risque things then get the suitcase and just put a lock on it I think lock it up. Honestly, if you just keep some vibrators next to your drawer and they open it up, they're probably going to more do the ew thing than the, oh, let me turn it on and see what that does for me. Yeah. And if they do, it's an interesting conversation. And this is an this is an intriguing, thought provoking question. And it's not a bad question when it comes to things like you were saying, the stuff that's handcuffs or the stuff that maybe could do that could hurt them because they don't know how to use it. A sounding thing. It's like a little more you're confusing. Sounding. Right. Yeah. It depends on the level of the toys that you're trying but to But like a vibrator and lube yes. shows pleasure it's is my back my massager. right right or no I put this on my fucking pussy or my cock and that's my right because I'm an adult and that's yes. what I do but don't like just leave it out on the counter so or leave it out on the counter yeah knock yourself out it's up to you <laughs> put that butt plug in your mouth and don't call us it, if something happens it's a it's a book child. stopper it's not a butt plug it's oh it, I, it's a wine stopper all right anyways all right bio, let's bio move time. on to the bio <laughs> all right y'all this is about the amazing Julianne Vaccaro. Julianne is a woman's life and health coach, erotic blueprint master coach, certified somatic sexologist practitioner, and certified holistic health counselor. 
Her innovative goddess approach methodology focuses on healing the mind, body, and soul so that women's bodies not only become safe, but pleasurable places to be. To learn more, visit juliannevaccaro.com. That's J-U-L-I-A-N-N-E-V-A-C-C-A-R-O.com. Well, all right. So here we are once again, another episode of Shameless Sex, also known as your favorite, most ridiculous, but also highly informative, playful, entertaining, wonderful, um, maybe highest moment of your day. I don't know. And today we are here with Julianne Vaccaro. Is that right? No, Vaccaro. <laughs> Vaccaro. Yeah. Vaccaro. <laughs> Julianne Vaccaro. Uh, and Julianne covers all types of topics, which you already heard about in the bio. In this episode, we are choosing to dive deeper into the erotic blueprints, which we've done before episode 126, because I remember with Jaya, who actually originally created the erotic blueprints. And in fact, there was a sex, love and goop. Was that the the name of sex, love and goop series where Jaya is on there working one-on-one with clients. One of Paltrow's podcast slash Moran slash empire. And well, one of our past guests, Dasharna, 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 she was on there too. And she was a sexological body worker on there. She's absolutely amazing. And so why we want to bring this back one is because we love your work uh, and and beyond erotic blueprints Two, um, we have seen how helpful understanding the erotic blueprints are in people who feel maybe a little lost or disconnected from their arousal state, like how do I feel aroused? How do I feel connected to my sexuality to that with partners or myself? Um, and so we feel like it's really important to revisit this, what, like 1.1 years later from when we did it with Jaya. So, but first, even though we already read your bio, can you please still tell our listeners how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality? Yeah. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. I'm excited to be here with you all. Um, oh gosh, it's been a wild journey to land in the world of somatic sexology. Uh, I started back like 10 years ago and I was really focused on my body and body image. And I wanted to really master like every area of the body so that I could obtain this perfect image. And so it was first with food and then it was with fitness. So I did almost every dietary theory out there. I did raw veganism, paleo, um, so many different things. And then I got adrenal fatigue, healed from that, took a turn into the bodybuilding space and the fitness space, taught yoga, kickboxing, boxing, worked at UFC gym, and was still really like striving for this image of perfection. And as I started to go down that route, I started to just have all of my symptoms come back, like from adrenal fatigue, my gut health was suffering, all my eating disorders came back. And I eventually just threw the towel in and was like, I can't do this anymore. Like for who and what am I doing this? And like, it was just kind of, I remember I was on the way home from UFC gym once and it was like two weeks out from a competition. And I stopped at target, grabbed a box of Oreos and a box of peanut butter and found myself in like a giant binge pulled into my driveway and was just like literally covered in peanut butter. And I remember looking in the rearview mirror being like, for who and what are you doing this? And at what point are you going to retire this and start to really come home to yourself? So that was one of the biggest turning points for me where I really started to heal the relationship to myself, body and food. And as I started to heal those layers and really peel them back one by one, I started to see like, okay, that was like kind of surface level stuff. There's a lot more under here. And I started getting into my trauma, my childhood wounds. I started to see that I was having one abusive relationship after the next. And one of them ended in a really unfortunate sexual trauma that left me really disconnected from my body. Like as if the food stuff wasn't already disconnection, leaving me disconnected, the the sexual trauma left me even more out of place. And so what I started to notice was all of the counseling and the therapy that I was doing, although it was helping me gain awareness and understanding, it wasn't actually helping me come home to my body. Like as soon as I would try to be intimate with somebody, all of these emotions would come forward or I would all of a sudden feel a lack of safety and I would pull back. And so 
I discovered somatic sexology and it just transformed my whole life and transformed my relationship to my, my body and sexuality was kind of like the last rock to turn over on my journey. And it was the most potent and powerful one. And so it became my passion and became everything that I wanted to teach and learn and and be and um, help women remember and come home to. Oh, I love this story, mm-hmm. Julianne. <laughs> and that's your story. That is so powerful. And I think a lot of folks can relate to that no matter whether they're experiencing as a, as a female identified human being with a vulva and in this stream of media and social media. And I can be so hard on myself without even realizing it because I don't fit into the box of, and I don't want to shame the Kardashians, but the Kardashian box that I always see that the young That's unobtainable. Women, right. That are, that are striving for, and I'm not comparing your journey to that. I'm just saying I can relate to that with my relationship with food and my relationship to my body and feeling good about myself. And, and the thing is with sexuality, a lot of times we strive, I want to speak for myself. I strive to be the sexual person and I, and I have the ability to, um, tap into my sexuality. However, sometimes I limit myself with my own limiting beliefs about what I look like or how I feel. And I think that is such an external piece of this really internal portrait that we all have the ability to paint the picture of ourselves that we confidence is key. Yes. And believing in how beautiful you are, no matter what you look like or what box you fucking fit into, you are still unique and amazing and beautiful. And that's something that I like have really been calling upon myself and limiting myself with the social media bullshit and also just what the media portrays as beautiful. And thank you for sharing that really vulnerable piece about the eating disorder stuff in relationship with your body. Cause I think that's really fucking vulnerable and, 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 and special. And to just want to want to highlight uh, adding to what you're saying for the I know that has been your work, April, as well as mine from in different ways, less about body image, but more about like worthiness or whatever. Um, and what you're speaking to Julianne is like, yes, we can say all the positive affirmations. Like I'm amazing. I'm beautiful. I'm great. I'm going to treat myself differently. But like, there's the deeper layers and the deeper roots. Hence why we had a whole episode with Keely Rankin that recently came out about how to, to find the right therapist or coach to do this work. And so there's so much more like right now, I think when we go to erotic blueprints, we're probably going to be talking more like the sunshine and rainbows pieces here Um, and just want to also acknowledge as to what April is speaking to is that April and I and probably you um, have also recognized that part of that work is going below all those onion layers to be like oh shit there's that original (laughs) stuff that's really hard and this this episode is not focused on that and we have plenty on that and if it comes up here that's totally fine but no thank um, you for speaking to that I think that is important so I just wanted to give you credit Julianne for for, for opening that up. And we've, totally. we've talked about it a little bit before. And this episode specifically, we've, we've done something with Jaya before, as Amy mentioned, episode number 126, the creator of the erotic blueprint. And we reference it a lot on this show because it is so important. And I typically forget what blueprint I am and Amy will remember mine. And we were talking about this before we were recording. So perhaps we can dive into that later, but that's um, psychoanalyze April. I, we, I, <laughs> <laughs> we would love it for the listeners that perhaps haven't listened to it and are just tapping in now, or they want a refresher from your perspective, because you also have all of, all of the backing and, and the, uh, the education within that realm of the erotic blueprints. So let's start with the refresher from your perspective. And then also let's talk about the blueprints themselves and explain to folks why it's helpful to understand your own slash your partner's partner or partner's erotic blueprints. Yeah. I love the erotic blueprints. Like you said, they're like the fun, playful aspect, I feel like, of sexuality. And Jaya, as you said, is the creator. And they're such a easy, implementable, and understandable framework for you to apply to the bedroom and to understand your unique roadmap to pleasure. So it's a really great framework to be able to put words to it for both yourself to have like some sort of self-awareness and understanding, but then also to be able to communicate that to your lover or lovers like, you know, maybe you are are realizing that you're one type of way in the bedroom and like you want to explode and, and explore all of that. Or maybe you find yourself in one blueprint and want to go somewhere else. The blueprints help you create the language necessary to help you move from A to B and allow the people that you're playing with to really meet you in those places. Hmm. 
Yeah. And I think that paints the, uh, the diversity of the human experience. And I always think of, because before I knew about erotic blueprints, I was uh, educated and aware of the core erotic theme by Jack mm-hmm. Marin's work, which okay. uh, was heavily taught in Somatica, which is the, the sex and relationship training that I did. And um, Celeste and, and I think both Danielle have been guests on our show. Um, and, they, and then they created their own version of that. And I liked how it asked a, a deeper question, not what do you want in sex? It's how do you want to feel? when you're being intimate, which was like, holy shit, that's a whole different thing. You're mm-hmm. not just like, oh, touch my nipples and lick my pussy and massage my back. It was more like, how do I actually want to feel when I'm touching myself or being touched by someone else in an intimate way? And that that just broadened it. And that was revolutionary for me. And then hearing about the erotic blueprints, speaking more towards sexuality and the unique ways that we might be able to tap into or feel our ultimate arousal and how it might differ from someone else and also how we might be able to work work with and navigate these fields. Um, so with that, this is going to be a big question. And then maybe from here, we can dive into quizzing April. Um, yeah. Can you share what are the different types of erotic blueprints? Like what do they entail later on? Do we do have the question of like the superpower and maybe the challenge within them. But right now, yeah. just if we can simplify it with what are the erotic blueprints? And then maybe we could do a test on April. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> April's like, ah! <laughs> so there's five total blueprints. And the first one that I'll start with is the energetic. And the energetic blueprint is all about space and anticipation. Energetics love tease. And they love like the the yearning and the the space between that, like the delicious tension from you and me. And so often the more space you give them, the better. And as turn as as far as touch, the energetic would be really, really light fingertip touch. So if you were to just kind of take your arm and feel with your other hand really lightly just the hair on your arms, that would be a type of energetic touch. And then the sensual is the second one. So sensuals are turned on by all of the senses. So think smell, taste, uh, sensation, play, sound. So they're going to be the ones that get really turned on by like the perfect playlist and fuzzy sheets and a really like yummy set of essential oils. And sensuals tend to be the erotic artists and Mm. um, love like skin to skin contact. So if you were to give your body the experience of a sensual, it would be somewhat of like a contouring touch. So if you were to almost like hug yourself and feel all over your body, that would be more of a sensual kind of flavor. And then we have sexual and sexual is... Those that are really turned on by penetration, orgasm, genital to genitals, um, nudity, ejaculation. It's kind of what I would think of when I think of like today's culture and society. Like um, mainstream porn, basically. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. And like the, the sexual blueprint is definitely simple, but it doesn't necessarily lack depth. I would always say that they love certainty um, and they want to get like straight to the point, which means that in the bedroom, they can go from zero to 60 real quick. Right. So that's a really powerful um, ability to have. So they love sex. It's equal to like air and water and shelter. It's that important for the sexual. And then we have the kinky. So kinky is the blueprint all about the taboo-ness. So it's anything really that's taboo for you. So it could be, if typically you have sex in missionary, it could be doggy style. Um, it's really just like, what's you, what's taboo for you? What does that mean for you? And there's two types of kink. So it could be sensation play, right? Where you're playing with different kinds of toys or impact, um, ropes, constriction, scratching. And then there's also the psychological side of it, which is more about surrender versus control, dominance and submission. So lots to play with in the kinky blueprint. Like, there's just so much creativity in there. And then we have the shapeshifter, which is the, like all of the blueprints combined. So the shapeshifter is turned on by all of it and they want all of the things. So they can go for hours and hours and hours. Like you could have six hands on the body and still as a shapeshifter, be like more, 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 like I'm just getting started. Give me more. Um, so as you said before, there's shadows and superpowers. I'm sure we'll go into them. And the shapeshifter brings all of that to the party. 
God, I, so when I hear shapeshifter, I'm like, I'm so not that. And I'm also very envious of that. I also am envious of the sexual who could just see a naked body and be like, pussy yeah. is pulsating. Because for me as an energetic, as, as, as that was my primary thing. We're going to figure out what April is. I but, think I'm more sexual. Like you pointed to me with the sensual, but I no, think I said I'm sex, more... No, I said sexual. Oh, oh no, thought, you're sexual. I thought you pointed oh, to Oh, no, me this, girl, this like, girl sees a dick and she's like, all right. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> naked, even some boobs. I'm like, yeah. Yes. For me, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Your dick's great, but like, what's the energy like? What you gonna like say the things? Do I feel safe? Do I feel respected? And like, yeah. I, honestly, I, I felt you. I personally I felt more turn on when someone says something that is about like how important I am in their life and how much they want to bring me into their life and like take care of me, respect my heart, and then my pussy pulsates. Versus like, mm -hmm. you're so sexy right now. I just like your ass looks so great. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But yeah. I, so, but that's uniquely me, and it doesn't mean I don't also see a naked body and get turned I on. I have too. a question though: if someone is sexual like i think i am which i've taken the test and i just can't remember yet mm -hmm. they're in a space that doesn't feel sexy like i'm distracted by a bad smell like there's a turd in the toilet or then something I'm not really to... important and too. So, so this is a thing though because i'm like oh god your dirty socks are on the floor and you haven't made your bed and i don't know when the last time you wash your sheets are what does that mean does that mean i could be a little bit of both yeah. So okay. we tend to have different percentages for each blueprint, right? Like we're not just like any personality test. This is an idea and a beautiful framework to use, right? But it's not like we can't fit everybody into a box. So this is a framework to use and then actually like explore what else turns you on, what turns you off. So that expression sounds like it could be the shadow expression of a sensual, which is like, we don't really like messes, right? Maybe we get a little bit stuck in our heads or tend to be like, oh God, that like... <laughs> where maybe we're like on our fours and we're looking at the floor and we're like, oh my God, look at all that fucking dust behind me. Like, 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 <laughs> that April would be the shadow. April's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. We're, but by the like, way, everyone, we have video of this. This is going on YouTube. So if you want to see April's face right now, she's like, fuck yeah, that's me. Go to YouTube and watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I so like that. that could be a shadow expression. Um, but if you're primarily a sexual, like that doesn't mean you don't have sensual, you know, parts to you and that you still play in that blueprint. So yes, you could be yeah. more than one thing for sure. Okay. Time for a quick break. This podcast was brought to you by one of our incredible sponsors, Helix Sleep. Did you know you will spend around one third of your life sleeping? Not to mention adding in all of the sexy playtime you're having. So why not have a mattress that gives you some of the best sleep and possibly the best sex of your life? I didn't realize how much my mattress mattered until I upgraded to my Helix mattress. As a person who often changes positions throughout the night, my Helix Midnight mattress has been a total game changer. Helix knows that every body is unique, so they make mattresses that are custom just for you, even mattresses that cool you down if you sleep hot. Helix makes it easy with their 10-year warranty plus 100-day free trial to try out your mattress risk-free. And if you go to helixsleep.com slash shameless, you can take their two-minute sleep quiz to get matched to the perfect mattress just for you. And guess what? Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash shameless. That's helixsleep.com slash shameless for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Go upgrade your sleep game now. All right, back to the interview. So when I took the test, I remember zero, so zero percent sexual. And by the way, I like sex, everyone. So we will elaborate on what that means. It does not mean I don't want to fuck. It does not mean I'm mm -hmm. asexual. And but then I was like, you know, 30 or 40 percent energetic. Then I was sensual. Then I was kinky. And then I was shapeshifter. And they all so I'm all these things. Mm -hmm. And yet and, and this is just it's just another it's map. Right. So like no one's saying this is perfect science. Uh, but I have found in a lot of clients and a lot of our listeners have found this has been really helpful. Um, okay. So let's, let's, let's figure out April's thing. Okay. So how do we do that? Yeah. Hmm. All right. You want to just dive in? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I do at least. Can Unexpected you... by the way, everyone. So do you have, do we have your us? consent, please sign here. Yes. My... yes okay. I, okay. I am signing in blood. All right. <laughs> That's well, my kinky side. So before we dive in, I think one of the, the things that you said, Amy, was like, it's a, it's a map, right? And 
What's cool about the blueprints is you could take the quiz online and find out that maybe you're 50% energetic. And then when you actually get on the table, your body might test something different. So if you saw on Sex Love Goop, like the, the couple that Jaya worked with, the man that she worked with, he thought he was primarily sexual, I believe it was. And then she got him on the table and he was this like huge energetic body. He had an energetic orgasm for the first time. He, he was beautiful. crying. Yeah, like, I, I, I was crying watching him cry. It was, it was so beautiful. beautiful. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. it was so sweet. So, um, we're, we can play with, with both like what kind of touch turns you on, um, and also the like logical way of going about it. So tell me what kind of things turn you on. So I would say when I went through that list of the five blueprints, which ones kind of stood out the most for you? It the could sexual, be one. It could be all. Sexual one did mm-hmm. because I will get turned on by only viewing something that is sexual, even if there isn't direct penis to vulvas exposed or, or, or there's breasts, even if it's the voyeur way of, of an almost situation, I'm like, that's hot. My pussy is starting to pulsate. Mm. Totally. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So ways I could say that could be a sexual blueprint is because there's the visual aspect, right? So sexuals tend to have the visual component where they get really turned on by the visuals of like, again, genitals, like naked bodies, hard cocks, wet vulvas, that kind of thing. Um, You also talked about like almost different, like just bringing in almost fantasies, but like maybe just like seeing certain naked bodies and that being the turn on. And you also mentioned before the ability to get turned on really fast by that. So that, that would all fall under the sexual blueprint. Mm -hmm. But my sense is that you have percentages in in all of the other ones. I really tend to believe that we, and I think most, a lot of coaches in that community really believe that we're all of it. It's like, this is a roadmap to all of it. And um, I feel that the more like layers we take off, we tend to be able to expand into all of these spaces. And that doesn't mean if you don't want to expand into all of these spaces that you're wrong or there's something broken, but it's just like, we, we can have the potential to find turn on in all of this if we want to. So my question is, can this erotic blueprint shift over the course of your sexual life? Because I think that in my core, I've always been a very sexual human in the blueprint sense based on uh, on the, the five blueprints that you've talked about. And can that shift? Will I suddenly be a shapeshifter in two years because I had an experience that turned me into this? Or will I generally stay this percentage, whether it's 20% or 25% or 50% in this sexual state? Uh, What are your thoughts on that? This is where the blueprints get so fun because they do shift and it's like, we're human. So depending on what's happening in our internal and external environment, that could affect the way we show up in our blueprints and in the bedroom, like the way that we get turned on or turned off. So part of the blueprint framework is that there's five different states or stages. A stage would be something that you're passing through a little bit more quickly, right? Like maybe just in the afternoon, you're in this one stage, or maybe it's a state where you have like a month in this state. Like for example, example, I just had ACL surgery. So my ability to have all different kinds of sex is co- is a little limited right now. So I'm in a different state than what I would normally be in. So there's a resting state, there's the healing state, there's curious, there's adventurous, and then there's also transformational. So mm-hmm. you can kind of like you know, flow in and out. And that's the whole thing about sexuality is that it's fluid. So mm-hmm. one afternoon you could be showing up as like an energetic that is all about transformational, um, sex and, you know, going to different galaxies through your orgasm and sex magic and all the things. And then another day you might be in this really curious place where you have like high kinky. And I think that especially as humans that bleed, right? Like our hormones are huge players in that. So when you're ovulating, you might show up as a little bit more sexual. Whereas when you're bleeding, you might actually be more energetic. You might not want penetration. So all different things to, you know, check out in your body. I've totally experienced that where like, you know, one day I'm like, I just really want this like deep connection, you know, feel safe, respected and, and like this, you know, almost like more tantric slow, whatever. And then three days later, I'm like, I want you to pull my nipple as hard as possible and (laughs) slap my ass. I know this makes no sense from yesterday, but that's what my body is telling me. And then my my nipple will hurt for like three days, but, but consensually, because well, I was the one pulling out that nipple that hard. So, but I think the beauty of it is the complexity of these bodies and how they're ever changing 
something, which I think can be daunting because it'd be so nice if we were just like, okay, here's how I am. Let me just follow that. And how boring would that be too? That was why I was asking because putting yourself into the box, we talked about the box in the, in the earlier portion of the interview where that's what I tend to do. I love statistics and labeling like, well, me I'm damn. kind of like this, mm -hmm. so I'm never going to change. So I so feel safe really that happy yeah. about learning that that does shift. And it makes sense because I'm intelligent enough to realize that throughout my cycle, the hormonal periods of my life, like where I'm a prickly pear and I'm like, bitch, get the fuck off me. Don't touch me <laughs> to, oh my God, all I want is to be touched or, oh my God, this is making me cry. Tell me about your childhood wounding. She's getting really good at this too, even just in friendship. And we'll get to that actually, because we also This will... is not about me. This episode no, is no, not I know. about me. This is a great example though. It's real life example. <laughs> and we will get to how this applies outside of sex. But this is, I was just going to say that I've witnessed that in your own growth, April, where you're like, today I'm feeling pretty pretty fucking prickly and i'm like all right so i'm gonna go about this a little gentle whereas in the past it's just like you just be all prickle and i'd be like i don't know what to do you know so we'll, yeah. okay, we'll get there we'll get there so next question about these blueprints though there's superpowers and challenges right so there's like mm -hmm. we can look at these things and say you know oh my god here's a way i can utilize this as my superpower to have better sex greater sex with myself others and then there's also the roadblocks we're like wow this makes things really hard like personally for me as an energetic a challenge is if I'm in a situation where uh, a lot of time spent on safety, relaxation, slowness is not there or available, it's a big barrier and also very rarely will lead to great sex. So I'm not going to talk about me, though. I'm going to open it up to what, like if you can elaborate on the superpower versus challenges ideas of all of these. Yeah, yeah. The superpowers. Well, that was a really great example of, let's say, like a a shadow expression of the energetic could be, or another word could be like a decelerator, right? It's like, what is going to speed up your turn on versus what would speed it down? And then knowing what those are for each blueprint. So the energetic would be, you know, you're, you tend to be able to have these like full body energetic orgasms where there's this like electricity that runs through the body. There's this transcendence to it. And we can touch these altered states of consciousness or non-ordinary states of consciousness. And there tends to be this like shaking or, or jerking sensation in the body. So that would be, it's like witchy. Like, it's like, totally. like, what is this witchy shit going on right now? Totally. You're like, you're just, you're letting, you're like surrendering to this energetic wave. That's just rolling right through you. And so, you know, your sensitivity is really powerful in the energetic blueprint. So there tends to be lots of that here. Um, which then could be also a decelerator where that sensitivity could also be something that actually slows down your turn on. Like, let's say like a lot of my partners have been sexual in the past and it's kind of funny, but a lot of times you'll attract partners that are the opposite blueprint. And I had a lot of trauma and living in my sexual blueprint. So naturally, like a lot of my past partners were sexual. And so that would actually have like before the blueprints for me, I didn't understand that the energetic would just hurt. Like you would just lose your turn on if it went too fast. Right. Mm -hmm. So that would be a shadow expression or a decelerator. So if it's too quick, too fast, your, your turn on might just go away and vanish. You're kind of just like, what, where the hell did it go? So like, that's what you were saying, Amy, if you, you want more space, more time, um, more of like a, a slower lean into that kind of play. And that brings on a whole nother topic, which we won't even get into in this episode, but we have plenty on how to actually understand what you want in sex and how to ask for it. But yeah. go Google that elsewhere, because uh, otherwise we'll be on this call for about three hours. So, but that is, that's its own hard work. So yes, but yeah, I, I agree with that being a great challenge on my end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the, the sensual, well, do you have any questions about the energetic before I go to the sensual? I feel good about it, but it's my own. So <laughs> You're like, I know this one in and I, mean, out. I see it. I see that. I see the power is the depth that can come when it's available. And it doesn't mean, so my, my primary partner, he is, his number one is, is se sexuality is, is, is a sexual, it mm -hmm. is not energetic, but he has energetic se sexual. It means it's shapeshifter, all those things too. And we are able, because we both have done this quiz. We've worked with people such as you, we know how to work with these things together. And so I guess what I'm saying is that we don't have to have all the answers about how to navigate this space, but it's, it's totally. now, if you're in partnership or partnerships, it's a conversation where it'd be really helpful for both. Or if you're in polyam, whatever relationship you're in to work with someone such as you or to take the quiz that we'll talk about later to figure out more about this so yeah i think we can move forward to the next one but yeah um 
Yeah. Cause we could talk about just one of them for a long yeah, time. like an episode for each one. Yeah. And like, and like you said, you know, a lot of times when we attract partners that are opposite blueprints, it's such an invitation to, to, to play in something different, play in something new. Uh, so the sensual, the superpower is really full body orgasm. So typically there tends to be more like resource for pleasure in all areas of body. Like it's not localized to just the genitals. So there tends to be full body orgasms and it, you can feel it in, in every part of the body, right? Sensuals also really love to, it's like that syrupy feeling. Like where there's, there's that episode of friends. Um, it's where Phoebe Buffet is with Alec Baldwin. Okay. And they go to like some wedding. I can't remember what, like which episode it was. They go to some wedding and Alec Baldwin is this character where he's just finding love for everything around him. So he's like, oh my gosh, that fork is just like beautiful. And look at this ornament and oh my gosh, that light shade. And like, that's like the sensual in their fullest expression. It almost reminds me of where they can find the deliciousness in just everything around them you're like nodding i i think i I love love friends i watched watched friends many times during the pandemic and yes that one because phoebe was always so positive and then she was with this guy and then it started to annoy her and i was like oh shit yeah 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 so it's just like that yumminess from everything uh and then the shadow expression or the decelerator could be that they sometimes tend to get stuck in in our heads right so the it's so important for sensuals to actually be able to relax because then that can help the, the acceleration process. So when we're in the shadow expression of sensual, it could be like, Oh my gosh, what do I smell like? What do I look like? Like, again, that picture frame is wrong or, Oh my gosh, the song changed. Um, so that could be a shadow. All right. So then we have the sexual and the sexuals, like I said before, they love certainty. So they want to know, like, are we going to fuck? Are we going to have penetration? Is there going to be orgasm? Like they want to get straight to it. And so that's one of their superpowers is the ability to get turned on super fast. And they have so much joy and fun from pleasure. And the shadow expression could be that sometimes they forget to be on the journey of sex because they're so focused on the outcome, right? Like it's again, so goal oriented that they can forget to maybe slow down and enjoy the slower moments. And, um, if there's not orgasms, they can sometimes feel like something's wrong or something's broken. Right. Rather than seeing that there's That's like totally me. Stuff. Oh my God. It's so me. You're so sexual. <laughs> yeah. She's like, Oh, you didn't come. Oh God. Now we got to make you come. It's very important. <laughs> Yeah. I, 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 and I, and as I say that, like, I, I have no insult. Like I, I honestly, in a perfect world, I really wish I could just look at a naked body and just be like, fuck yeah, let's do this. But, and, and I also see the shadow side of the goal. And I wish I could get turned on by people's childhood wounding yet. It won't happen. I love it. Well, yeah. Tell me about your childhood wounding and how important I am. And I'm like, what? she's like, Oh my God, do you have a therapist. <laughs> oh my God. You've been seeing them for three years. Oh my God. Let's let me just, like, and I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, let's let's oh, get in there. God, we're funny. Oh, maybe. Uh, okay, I feel like that could be a kink. I mean, that turns us into like the kink one. Like that well, got that too. <laughs> Um, so the kink superpower, I mentioned it before, I feel is really creativity, the ability to get turned on by so many different things and to actually like play out so many different kinds of scenes and ideas. And there's lots of healing opportunities in the kink blueprint to heal, heal trauma and to really work on our voice and our boundaries and the ability to like work through consent conversations and to know what our edges are again, in a very safe consensual space. It's, it's a really great practice if, if it interests you. Um, and then the shadow expression can be shame because King can hold so much shame again, it's taboo, right? There's so many societal programs and religious programming. I'm sure you guys talked about that all the friggin' time. So there's so much of that that can live in the kink blueprint. Like Jaya talks about that often where sometimes I see in my own clients as well. Kink is the lowest percentage, but then when we actually get to table work and I get my hands on their body, kink is really high, but it's just like getting out of the head and actually into the body and what's beyond the shame. Like what's living beyond that? Where's the turn on? And I bet once they go into that place and all of a sudden there's like deep transformation and especially if they're finding partners that can maybe meet them somewhere along the way, maybe they're not like the perfect match for your fetish or your kink, but like someone who can at least accept you and work with you in ways that might involve shared body experiences or opening up to outside experiences. There's so many varieties on the table, but it's a beautiful way to like, I love the creativity piece that you added to that. I think that feels really good. 
Yeah. And it's like, what's the, where's the juice? And I think where there's shame, there's usually some juice and like something that's really alive. Like we're protecting something that's really like important there that probably has a lot of aliveness that like, if we go in there slowly, there's probably lots of erotic energy and power behind it too. Okay. Time for a quick break. This podcast is free to you because of our amazing sponsors like Uber Lube. Uber Lube is a luxurious silicone lubricant that can enhance your sex and intimacy. Uber Lube's unique formula is velvety, long lasting with no flavor or scent. And it feels absolutely incredible on the body. There are thousands of doctors recommending Uber Lube to their patients because it's less likely to throw off your pH than most other lubes. So whether you want to make your hot sex even hotter, or you want to prevent dryness, take our advice and check out our favorite go-to, Uber Lube. Uber Lube isn't just for sex. I use it for massage, to tame my frizzy hair, to prevent chafing, even for oral sex sessions. I love how it comes in a beautiful bottle with a pump top for easy access, appearing more like a cosmetic product so you can leave it on your nightstand shamelessly. Uber Lube is without a doubt my favorite lube and countless listeners agree, often stating, we never knew lube could be this good. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com. Use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by omgs.com. OMGS combines scientific research of real vulva owners so you can learn shame-free techniques on how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied 20,000 plus people of all ages and turned the research into animated modules, short videos, and beautiful infographics that are tasteful and easy to understand. Whether you want to learn about external pleasure, internal stimulation, or techniques with toys, OMGS can help you master vulva pleasure. Let me tell you, I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and it's been changing their lives because knowledge really can activate your pleasure power. OMGS is for anyone who cares about vulva pleasure and wants to take it to the next level. OMGS can help you become a sexual strategist by equipping you with the tools you need to unlock your pleasure potential. Plus, your OMGS purchase helps fund more pleasure research. OMG, that's great. Only pay once and these techniques are yours forever. That's right. This is not a subscription service and you don't need to download a thing. So go to omgs.com slash shameless to get 10% off when you purchase any OMGS season. Again, go to omgs.com slash shameless to get 10% off right now. Time to pursue your pleasure. And now back to the show. 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 So then there's still the shadow, the shape shape shifter, not mm-hmm. the shadow shifter. I'm thinking of like Game of Thrones. Episode <laughs> number 122. Shadow shifter. Well, the shape shifter has always been so interesting to me. So, so is it that there's someone that moves all over these places and they don't really like have like a you know, primary or whatever, and they move all over. And then to me is like, how, where's the shadow in that? Uh, yeah. Period. Yeah. Because they don't, get a hold oh. of what they want well, actually, all over the place julianne tell us because actually, i'm yeah. just making yeah, assumptions which well, isn't type a amy and april will probably be like just figure it out <laughs> just <laughs> choose one <laughs> i'm like where is virgo in your charts i'm a virgo sun i'm feel. a Vir- virgo I, rising sorry like, i am yes yeah. virgo rising i'm mostly i don't know what amy is virgo in your chart, yeah. but probably somewhere in your so, butt right now girl <laughs> so the shadow for the the shapeshifter is typically the shadow of all of the blueprints right like if you're you can have the superpowers of all of them you're also going to have the potential for all of the shadow expressions so you were on the right track with what could happen in that blueprint is that because shapeshifters can tend to just shift as like responding to their partners they can end up sometimes serving themselves so that they end up pleasing their partner right and they might not realize it right away but because they're playing and stuff that still really turns them on, but it's like, what actually, what do you want? What's your desire? Mm-hmm. Um, shapeshifters can also tend to feel maybe bored because there's that desire and the ability to hold so much that they feel like they're never fed. Like there's kind of this like insatia- mm-hmm. insatiability that happens, like lack of satiation rather. I know I've been with shapeshifters before now. I know it. <laughs> yeah. It all makes yeah. sense. That makes so much sense. Oh my mm-hmm. God. No, my mind, my uh, mind was just blown because I there's been folks that I kind of can know navigating when I'm in a sexual experience with them, not how they are. I haven't like done the erotic blueprint 
on them in my brain. However, now to yeah, saying this, like, I know a, like a couple of particular people. I'm like, whoa, you were such a shapeshifter. And I could see them getting maybe bored in the situation where they were expecting a different outcome, which mm-hmm. were like needing more and more. And right. More. Which is where the other pieces come in. And I don't know if you're going to speak to that working with these erotic blueprints and the things that we can do to, if we're in the shadow piece of this to help maybe move into the superpower piece, because those are the, those are the things that I know when I go into my shadow piece of my, my sexual part, or when I'm in my head, if I'm in the sensual piece, uh, and when I'm shape shifting, I, because I know that I've done that before, what can we do to improve that? So we can stay in our, in our sexual erotic superpower. And then can I, I'll just add to that question to make it a little well, extra ask longer. 15 questions in a row. Well, add to that also, <laughs> and then how can we do what April just said, the superpower and bringing outside of sex too, like into the, mm-hmm. uh, the everyday world. So like what April said in the bedroom and like, okay, mm-hmm. superpower piece, but yeah. then how can we also feed that into family life, business, et cetera? Okay. You ready? I'm tracking it all. So Here we I think, go. I think with the shapeshifter, it's like you have the ability, this analogy is really good to, to speak like nine different languages. And if you're only speaking one, there's this, like, you're not using all of it and you want to use all of it. So I love the conversation of how to use these outside of the bedroom, because I've found that the more that I've worked with these in my first and foremost, my own self-practice, but also with clients, the more that we actually follow our blueprints outside of the bedroom, I've found the more effective and efficient and more joyous we are in our lives because we're working with our blueprint. So um, I'll start there because I brought that up first. I feel like with shapeshifters, you have access to all of the blueprints, right? You're turned on by all of them equally. And I think all of us have percentages. So it could really valuable to know like, what's your blueprint stack? So what's your primary blueprint? Like, it sounds like you, April, your primary is, is, um, energetic. What's your secondary? Oh, I'm and energetic. Then, she's sexual. Sorry, Amy, you're yeah. energetic. Yeah. So like, what's, what's your, what's your top, what's your order. Right. And then, then you would know what's your stack. So what I found is really fun to play with is like, so I'll, I'll use me as an example. I'm energetic and then I'm an energetic shapeshifter. So when I start my day in my energetic blueprint, which is really slow, um, very slow moving, I'm, I'm, I'm connecting to my spirituality. Um, maybe a, one of my favorite practices to really start my day in honoring my energetic is like a microdose to mushroom bath and really going like into the womb, into my own body. And then I'm so soft that like everything else in the day is is received really well in my body because I'm honoring that. And then I can go into all of these other blueprints. Whereas if I start my day with my sexual, which is like aggressive, no morning routine, I go right into it. Everything is like, it's like overdrive for me. I can't like, there's so many things thrown on me that I'm not regulated, which is tend to, that tends to be the experience of the energetic and the blueprint, right? Does that like short circuit? So I feel like when you, when you start to look at how these express outside of the bedroom, it's inside into like how to honor your body and then how to optimize your energy. Like for example, sexuals tend to go straight to the point, right? Um, so they love that certainty piece. It's like, how do we create the balance so that we don't burn out and that we don't like only stay in one blueprint because we're humans, we need to balance it. Um, and it's a really powerful way to, to really gain insight into how you operate. So, 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 okay. So let me so just make some examples here. So April's a sexual and she wakes up in the morning. She's really horny and turned on right away with, so for her, that being a part of like what kind of fills her up in her life, there may be multiple options, right? She could like harness the chi and not masturbate or have an orgasm, or she could choose to self pleasure. And that might also feed into the rest of her day. Um, so we're speaking kind of long, that versus me as an energetic would be in April. Also, by the way, she's a meditator. Like she actually probably has more better self-care practice practices than I do these days. Um, and, but so, you know, for me as energetic who, who does move slow in the morning would be, you know, my meditation, maybe like some self touch on my arms and things that probably isn't feel isn't very sexual and doing some breath work and carrying that on the day to my business, to my relationships and my work. Um, and maybe there's not one right answer to that, but are you saying that kind of like we can use that as fuel for moving forward and outward in different ways that might just help us feel more um, expansive and alive? Totally. And I think the sexual, like the organization and the structure, I sometimes feel like those go hand in hand too. So like you said, she has her practice that are are regimented. I sometimes find that that could be like a sexual thing. Hmm. 
Mm. that certainty aspect. That just backs up the, I mean, I'm definitely, whether I'm on the table or I'm going to retake the, the exam, the erotic blueprint exam slash it's called a quiz. <laughs> Don't worry. It's not an exam. Like 16 questions. Your everyone parents are going to get the results. It's going to be crazy. Uh, you can take, you can take it. You're going to fail it. <laughs> I get nervous every time an exam comes up or a quiz. I'm like, what is going to happen? <laughs> so th- this, this is kind of, I feel like this isn't kind of, this is for every single human that is listening to this podcast right now, no matter what gender you're rocking, no matter what you got below the belt happening, because if you want to learn about your erotic blueprint and even though you may not, as, as Julianne talked about, it may not fall into that category all the time, but you can learn more about yourself and your partners, which we sort of touched on. Uh, and I know that there's this episode could go on for hours. And unfortunately we, we can't have it go on for hours. And Julianne has her own podcast. I know this is what I'm I'm trying to, I'm trying to put out the fact that you can listen to Julianne's podcast. Julianne's going to tell people how you can discover your erotic blueprint, take the quiz, the exam and get the results. And then, um, also please share if you will, Julianne, how people can find you and work with you and any, um, of your, uh, social handles and website and your offerings. Thank you. Thank you. From the sexual to the, and the energy and the shapeshifter. No, right to the point. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Instagram is a great place to find me. It's at Julianne Vaccaro. So two N's and then two C's, one R. Same with my website, JulianneVaccaro.com. And then my podcast is called The Reclamation Project on iTunes and Spotify. And we will have all the links in our show notes here. We will be putting clips of this on our Instagram. So if you're not following us on Instagram, please go to Shameless Sex Podcast on Instagram. Also, we have a YouTube channel that will have this whole video. I'm sure Julianne will be reposting some of our clips on her Instagram too. So we'll be doing some swapsies around here too. But um, yeah, the information is limited. This is like a nut. We have a lot of podcasts where we're like, can we do this for three hours? But also we'll burn also, out. Also just follow <laughs> us on TikTok and watch yeah. the train wreck happen. <laughs> we are going to get better, but We're you can trying. watch the old train wreck of TikTok. It's going to get better and better. And a year from now, when I'm 40, I'm going to be like, wow, I can TikTok and I'm 40. Look at me, ma'am. I'm sexual. <laughs> I'm energetically sexual. I'm a shapeshifter now. And I'm a shapeshifter. <laughs> yeah. I can be a yeah. Thank you. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Julianne. This was really good just to actually tap in with you learn more about this phenomenal it's it's I think it's not only a methodology it's it's a way of life really because it does tap in not only to your sexual being but it taps into your your reality the the being that you are on a regular that is outside of the bedroom and I think you really were able to capture that beautifully for our listeners and for myself so selfishly speaking thank you (laughs) and uh, we hope to see you again really soon and to all of you beautiful shameless sex revolutionaries out there in whatever land you're in if it's erotic or kinky or sexual or sensual or maybe it's just blissful maybe you're just mo- mowing your lawn maybe you're just mowing your fucking lawn. maybe you're petting your animal i don't know whatever you're doing just take a moment and review us on itunes go ahead five stars are preferred and we love each and every one of you for taking the time and all it does It allows more folks to find people like Julianne and all of their work and our work. We don't get anything except for your beautiful uh, reminiscence about how fantastic your lives have become because of listening to Shame Sex. I'm just kidding. We love you, though. And I do cry when we see bad reviews. So if you hate us, then I'm sorry. We're trying to get better. I screen it, but yeah, we'll just. Amy's a screener. Can you just, if you have a bad review, just email me personally. Let's talk about it. I will get back to you and then we'll try to fix that shit. Just don't put it on (laughs) iTunes because it fucks things up. It only fucks things up for me because I get really sad. Not just for April. Anyways. It's true. (laughs) All right. And we really do love each and every one of you. Like I dream about you. I love you. Amy and I, you really just like have changed our lives. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you next Tuesday for another episode of Shameless Sex. Ciao for now. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.